hundred house developments where they only had 25 there. Um, so we're looking at developed and mature communities. And, and in terms of amenities, we, we had two things going for us. One, our due structure is basically a half of what the average is across these 75 facilities. Um, and the other is that we, with the exception of, of the billiards lounge kind of facility, um, in a, what a lot of people would consider a substandard bocce facility, we've got everything. Now, there's one community down in Florida, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but one community down in Florida that's got a polo fields, and, a, and another one that's got zip lines. <laughs> well, if we're going to have zip, bowling, true. So if we're going to have zip lines, we've got to have full-time EMS sitting at the base of the thing, right? Because <laughs> most of us have heart attacks. But, uh, but we're, I mean, we're very well set. We're going to continue to look at this every year. We're going to go through these iterations and and see what uh, uh, what other communities might be doing that would be of interest to us. But right now, uh, we're in good shape. Nobody's got five golf courses. This is why we're asking for an amenities uh, overview committee, basically, to keep this up and look at it. I'd like to make one comment. This is a pay-as-you-go, pay-as-you-play community. Just like when I swim every morning, I have to pay to use those facilities. So it's going to be a philosophy change if it is free. Take the default loss, give them back to the Cherokee. <laughs> yeah, all, all I'm saying is that. Should I write that down? Oh, you know, like if I go to the pool, I, I pay, you know, a small fee. But our wellness center, to my, you know, last time I checked is like, it's like 45 bucks a month. I, you know, if I wanted to drive to Planet Fitness and I don't need the pool, because I have a pool, uh, it's 10 bucks a month. Right. That's all I'm saying. You, you know, if there's money or an area where we could buy a couple of treadmills and, you know, those types of things that would be included, you know, in our... I, I understand if somebody's got to pay for it, <laughs> you know, we'll all be paying for stuff like that. But yeah, that's I, all I'm saying is that, to me, you know, $45, I know, you know, like, if you join Lifetime Fitness, you're going to pay that much, but they've got pools and saunas and other stuff too, but I don't necessarily need that because I have that elsewhere. Good point. And, you know, I don't, you know, like I said, I could go to Crossville and, and pay 10 bucks a month. But, but, I mean, that's all. It, it's a, you make a good point, but we also don't want to get out ahead of our interference. I mean, we've got a, we've got a private business that runs that facility, and I guess, just speaking for myself, uh, we take this room and turn it into a, to a fitness center. Uh, we've stolen quite a bit of business from our from our neighbor next door, and then we've got a building down there, what are they going to do with it? So, I mean, it's got to be a cooperative, well, one, cooperative one, effort. One of the things, too, you really have to be cognizant of is that, that while there's an interest and a support for some of this stuff, you know, you have to make sure that the community is going to support it. You know, that, that this demographic is willing to spend money on certain things. I mean, we can build a lot of stuff here, but if you don't use it, then that that doesn't get us anywhere. So that's, that's part of it, is understanding the market that we have, trying to show other people that there is a market for this kind of activity out here, and you should invest in Fairfield Glade. I mean, that's the whole concept behind a commercial development. And, uh, and that's part of the master planning process that we'll be going through, too. So, so but, but yeah, there, there's a lot of needs like that. The question is, will this community support it? Well, the really good news, and again, going back to David's research that we went through, uh, and it might be interesting for you if, if you didn't see it in the first presentation, there was a, a detailed presentation of probably, what, sev 60, 70 amenities. They were broken into three categories, the high demand, medium demand, low demand. High demand were the ones that basically every community had. We had them all. Medium demand, we had all, we considered bocce as not up to speed, so that was the only one that we didn't have. And then you got to the one-offs, like the zip line or whatever, and we were missing a few there. So not only do we have all of the ones that, that most communities have, but then we also looked at the quality of those amenities and the, uh, you know, you have depth and breadth. Well, yeah, we got golf, what is that? Well, we got a nine-hole executive course. Well, we got five championship courses here. So we also look very good against communities 
based on the quality of the amenities that we have. We have indoor tennis. That's not something that everybody has. That's a big deal when we're, we've got a little frost out here. We don't want to be out on the tennis courts. We have indoor pools and those kinds of things. So it's not only the presence of the amenities, but the quality of the amenities. And then you look at that versus the cost to live here, and it's, it's very attractive. But back to that amenity committee, their primary focus, I think, is going to be making sure that the quality of the amenity stays where they need to be. There, I think, going back to the original question, we don't see a long list of new amenities that we need to build, which may raise the question of, you know, how, what impact is that going to have on dues, et cetera. We didn't come up with anything like that. We were really looking at sprucing up a few, doing some things better, keeping things up to date, but we, there's not some list of six or eight expensive things that we have to do down the road that, that we identified. I hope that gets to that question, and gentlemen here. Oh, a quick follow-up on your amenities. Um, have you considered all the uh, mini golf, uh, uh, the putt-putt golf being quite substandard compared to other communities that we've been to? Has that been? Well, the mini, uh, the mini golf uh, gets back to the issue of land use and, and master plan. So when that, when that group comes together and starts to look at what pieces of land should be used for what purpose, then the question is, is that mini golf shuffleboard, that whole thing sits back there off by the library, is that the right place for it? Um, does it better fit somewhere else when we start to look at the plant? So we haven't got to that point yet. Okay. Point well made. Uh, gentlemen, right back here. One point, I, know, I recognize that the committee is a forward-looking committee, but on a lot of these ideas, you need to also look at what has happened in the past. For example, on the issue of the wellness center, I wasn't here, well, I was kind of here in and out, but at one point there was a building up where basically the mirror blast, lake blasts are now that had a, had a mm -hmm. I guess, basketball court, had a weight room and things like that. And I believe there was some deal about allowing the wellness center to come in and do away with that one. So you've got to look at the history of those things to see what happened in the past, which may set precedence for, for things in the future. Another, one, another option, another idea or thought would be at one, at one time there were pool tables in this building. You need to go back and look in the records and how many people paid to play pool. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that really a going thing, you know? Well, and, that, and the reason for the recommendation here um, with the lounge bar facility, billiards pool, would be to combine those. The right. folk, a couple of, John on the committee has, uh, yeah, he's sitting right next to you. <laughs> I mean, he's, okay. he's been involved with that. I've got a brother that lives in a Del Webb community over off of Hilton Head. He plays in a billiards league. But if you're gonna set a couple of pool tables in a room somewhere, they're probably not gonna get a lot of use. If you put some food and drink in there and create some some league environment around, then, you know. And the other thing would be, if you are looking at a relocation of something, for example, the putt-putt mini golf, you need to look at its usage to see if it warrants being replaced and moved. Absolutely. It might be one of those things to go, uh, it's not getting any use. It's not making some, it, we're losing money on it. Well, I'll do away with it. But the flip side could be, it's not getting any use because it's in a bad location and if we put it somewhere else. So that's where that master plan comes in because location of an amenity can make it happen or kill it, exact same amenity. It, it, I, I'll tell you, there's a lot of people who live here who don't even know we have mini golf. <laughs> or, and they, they, they don't even know it's there, but if it was some place. So the point is the master plan takes all of that in consideration and back to your point about looking to the past, right. there's more research that will have to be done. We've looked at trends but we've not looked at, okay, if we're gonna do something about pool and billiards, what can we learn from our residents about what happened in the past? Do they really want, we haven't asked that question. We haven't asked you guys, do you wanna play pool? We've just seen that it's an amenity that a lot of communities have that we really don't have, so it's on our radar. So when we start looking at that master plan, what do you all wanna, what does the community wanna do? What would be the participation rate? What would we, how, how, to what, magnitude are we talking about? A couple pool tables in the corner is not the same as a billiard hall that has some atmosphere and all of that. So this master plan takes into consideration the trends that we know about, 
But now we have to go back and do a lot of work with you all to find out what you really want. And we haven't, uh, all this time we haven't gotten that. down in the weeds yet. And, and a couple of these recommendations up here, this committee is going to be responsible for taking it to the next step. But three of the five were not. So we're making recommendations with your input that we're going to present to the board. And then the board can look at this and say, you know, I don't want to do that. Um, but we're, this is step one. We got lots of steps to go. Question in the back there. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, can you provide an update or, or speak to you briefly regarding the status of the Council Park? Uh, an idea that was introduced a year or so ago and really haven't heard much about it since. Bill, do you want to touch on that? Bob, Park? Bob's back there. Oh, Bob? You want to? Whoever our general manager. The developer is still working on plans for that, and he still would like to see an amphitheater stage in place by Memorial Day 2020. And in fact, uh, he's been working with a committee of our residents, which uh, DJ is on that committee, to uh, people that are in the entertainment uh, business, sound, lighting, things of that nature, to provide input as to the design of the stage, sound, lighting, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, his goal is to have an amphitheater uh, in place by Memorial Day 2020, uh, right there near Mirror Lake, actually kind of on the northern end of Mirror Lake. Also, some press a while back about the building of a general store or a drugstore or something on the property. Yeah, he's actually working with a uh, real estate, uh, excuse me, a restaurant broker in Nashville and put the word out uh, looking for a restaurant operator, but we haven't gotten much uh, update on that. I think he did indicate a couple have come forward with some interest, but uh, I wouldn't anticipate uh, that being in place by uh, Memorial Day 2020. That's probably future. But he is definitely interested in that. He'd like to see a restaurant in that area as well. Yes, ma'am, right here. So as the developer, he's got these interests. There you go. Is this developer planning to pay for these then, or is, do we have any say in, in anything? Well, there's a lot of different options there. I don't, I don't know what we have. I don't know that anything's been settled on that, Bob. The lady's question is how would it be financed? You're talking about the concert? Uh, amphitheater? Bob will, Bob will answer this for you. Yeah, that is all his land and he plans to uh, pay for that. Uh, the only thing that he's asked us to do is to uh, actually extend the trail around Mirror Lake and then also some lighting in that area for nighttime events and things of that nature. But uh, he plans to fund that. Likewise, the restaurant uh, it's his goal not to be the operator, but to actually be the landlord of the building. So to construct the building, then have a uh, restaurant operator actually do the tenant improvements and operate uh, the restaurant. So. <laughs> okay, how about one last question? Pat's got a comment here. I just want to add one quick comment. The fact that you guys have done a great job, I really appreciate what you're doing. But the other thing, folks, whether you're aware of this or not, with all the amenity talk, I don't know if you're aware that we have 64 clubs in Fairfield Glade. You can go over to the admin building and you get about a 10-page printout of every club in Fairfield Glade. There is something for everybody here. I've never even heard of half of these things, but it's there. <laughs> Well, we'd like to thank everybody for coming today. We appreciate you have one, one quick uh, one, commercial one there. Final, just quick comment is that I want to put a commercial in. Two weeks from today, the 29th, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon from 2 to 3.30, uh, the Government Affairs Committee for the club is hosting Congressman John Rose for a town hall meeting. So I'd encourage you to come. It's an opportunity for you to talk to him, ask him questions. He can talk to you about some of the things that are going on in Washington and the district. And, and uh, I think it would be a very interesting time. I think it's an indication of our effort as a community club. We want to outreach to our elected officials and work with them and certainly developing a relationship with our federal officials and our state and local officials is a key part of that. And one of the things that you probably all are aware of 
is that our state representative, Cameron Sexton, is, the, uh, is going to be the incoming Speaker of the House in the Tennessee General Assembly. And having spent my career in government, that's a very powerful position, and it's quite an honor. And it's, I think it's going to bring a lot of good things to Cumberland County and Fairfield Glade. And our, our other representative, State Senator Paul Bailey, is the chair of the Senate Commerce Committee, which is a powerful committee in the Senate. And he's been doing a lot of outreach with the club too. So, so we feel it's an opportunity for us as a strategic planning committee, a government affairs committee, as a community club board to really do a lot more outreach working with those officials and uh, communicating with them what our concerns are, what our needs are, and hopefully we will see some, uh, some good things happen from it. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. I know it's, there's other things you can do. Come to the annual, annual meeting on September 20th. Uh, we will present our final recommendations. We will go back. We will review this meeting. We will review some of the discussions we've had with all the other groups that we've reached out to. And then we will finalize this. But this is a work in progress. It's an ongoing work in progress. It doesn't stop in September 20th. We encourage you to get involved. If you're interested in becoming a member of this committee or some other committee, Please do it. Please put in your application. And thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.